The word diorama actually means to see through. The history of dioramas goes back to the time that many of the large murals were being painted in cathedrals. So it, it actually is an offshoot of the painting of these murals and a continuation of that artificial environment to depict a story. A diorama works just like a painting or an illustration in that all the lines and all the masses and forms have to be in just the right place. Every vine and tree trunk becomes a compositional element. And then the main character, the Margay cat hanging upside down with his oropendula kill, another oropendula that just escaped, and three of these magpie jays squawking at the action are all deliberately angled and designed to pull the viewer's eye into the center of attention and then recirculate your focus. depict a story is what a diorama actually is attempting to do. The story of a natural environment, a specific environment given to a specific time and a specific place. So now what I'm going to do is uh, we have the diorama, the 3D part of the diorama, pretty much installed. We're still doing some final detailing on the strangling fig. and. As part of that final detail, it's good to do a test fit, in this case of this margay, that's going to be hanging in here, having Grizz grab this bird, so I can make sure it's going to fit, and also see if I need to add a few more vines around it. So. Dioramas were first built in the late 1800s. Photography was in its infancy. The average person did not have the ability to travel to these far off exotic places. So this was a way that people were able to go to the museums to have an environment depicted for them that probably in their lifetime that they were never able to see. Our scientists began creating dioramas in the 1920s. It's a practice that we continue until today. Dioramas are a wonderful vehicle to illustrate the biodiversity of life. Animals, insects, reptiles, and birds, all interdependent one with another. Surely dioramas are a powerful way to help us communicate our mission, which is to inspire wonder, discovery, and responsibility for our natural and cultural world. Dioramas were composed of three main elements. You had the foreground, which consisted of the plants, and usually a uh, specimen that the scientists wanted to present, whether it was a bird or a mammal or a reptile. And the third part of that was the actual mural constructed as a curved wall to help with the perspective of the diorama so that it created the fullness of the diorama. This is the Pelincillo Mountains, Robert, and if you look over here, this is looking east into Arizona. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to form part of the foreground that then you will go over into your background. And so coming up from this low side over here on the left, these rocks will rise up and come across kind of high and then start to drop down as we get out this way. That's good because then we're going to have a really nice drop off so the people viewing it are going to feel that they're up high in the mountains looking way across a wide gully to the opposite side, a great sense of depth. And by including this out here, you can shoot off to the horizon, you know, hundreds of miles on a flat wall. And with those clouds, these nice mare's tail type clouds coming up out of here and swinging this way, I think it'll really pull the viewer's eye sort of so we'll get that really motion. People found that it was much easier to create the fullness and the lushness of the environment using paint and perspective than it was in recreating three-dimensional objects like plants or trees or animals. The clouds using here are very typical of desert environments. It's very arid, there's not a lot of moisture in them. And uh, it's often very windy in places like this, so the clouds are very whipped out and thin. 
I paint them all with a spray gun like you'd paint a car with and choke off the air supply and just work with the fluid. And the spray gun's not happy about it, but it gives a very good effect. After I do the sky, then I start in on the terrain. With all this reference, I can exactly duplicate this location. It's not just any desert location that might look something like it. It's highly specific. Every gully and ravine and fold and rock is all true to the original. Everything inside a diorama, because it's so important that it's scientifically accurate, has to be correct to the smallest detail. The birds have to have the correct foliage and the coloration. The leaves are absolutely correct.